Hello, my name is Jim Dixon, and I'm on the faculty team for the IT Network Security Program. Today, I'll give you some information about what you will learn in the program, why you may want to take it, what type of work you can expect upon graduation, and hopefully answer some of your questions. If you want to know why you should take if you want to know why you should think about the ITNS program, let's take a few minutes to look at what our graduates do. This specialty in the IT field focuses on securing the infrastructure supporting IT operations in an organization. This includes networks, it includes servers, endpoint devices, and cloud environments. There's a high demand for people working in this field these days, so it's a good thing to consider from that perspective. I'm sure you've heard of some of the problems we face trying to keep our systems and our data secure in these times. Suffice it to say that this is a never ending challenge, requires constant monitoring of current security events and threats. If you've been working generally in IT or you're a newer grad from an IT program and want to gain work in the IT security field, this is a great program for you. ITNS is a bring your own device program, meaning that you have to have your own laptop. There's a web page on the college site that states that you need the better configuration and describes what you need for that. But I'm going to add some more information that is specific to this program. First of all, you can run Windows or Mac. Either of those is fine. If you look at the college website, it states that you need the Parallels application if you're running on a Mac and that is not true for this program. Also, there are recommendations on the website for 16 gigabytes of memory, although eight gigabytes is required. I can tell you that eight gigabytes of memory is not going to give you awesome performance. So 16 gigabytes is really recommended. And also solid state is really recommended for your storage since mechanical drives will not give you very good performance again. Another point is a 15 inch or larger screen. And in this type of a program, the more screen real estate you have, typically the better off you are. Now, having said that, many of our students work with a 13 inch screen and they rapidly flip back and forth between different applications. If you are totally comfortable with that, then absolutely no problem. Another item, uh, wireless is required, wireless networking, which of course is included on pretty much every laptop these days. On the website, it states that wired networking is optional. And in our program, that is not the case. You do have to have wired networking. If your laptop does not include a wired network port, you will need to get an adapter for that. And from a hardware perspective, you also need a web camera. The last thing I want to address with bring your own device is the time it will take to repair a failure of your laptop, which is usually related to your warranty. You use the laptop every single day in your program and having to send it away for three weeks to get it repaired is not going to be an option that you'll be able to deal with. So as a result of that, if you don't have a laptop yet, you're getting one, make sure that you get something that you can get a repair done pretty much the next day. If you already have a laptop and you don't have that in place, you're going to need to think about how you'll deal with that. This program is delivered at our Waterloo campus. I want to switch over and give you a view of the type of environment that you'll be working in. This is a view of the networking lab that you can find in the virtual tour on the Comstogo website. A uh, couple things I wanna point out, uh, pretty much all of the rooms you'll be studying in are similar to this 
except that in the non workshop or non lab environment, we have shorter desks. You'll notice that on each of the desks, there is a place for power and also wired networking for your laptop to connect to. And this particular room is also connected to our data center. So let me spin this around so that you can see what that looks like. As you can see in this view, we have a ton of networking equipment. This is available to our students for in-class study, working on assignments, that type of a thing. And if I back out the view a little bit and you can't really see it very well uh, due to the glare, but on the right-hand side, there is our private cloud environment that all of our students use for their systems work. Uh, so anything systems oriented is done virtually, and that is using standard industry software that you would see once you graduate. The other thing I'd like to point out is that all of this equipment can be accessed remotely. So if you have assignments or lab work to complete and you would prefer to work from home rather than coming on campus, you can absolutely do that. Next thing I'd like to look at is what kind of work you might be doing once you finish the program. I've kind of broken this down into a few general types of positions. You'll notice that there's not really any um, job titles here. And the reason for that is in this industry, those titles are almost meaningless. I've seen people using the same title or working with the same title in different companies and those folks end up doing different types of work and are quite often paid quite a bit differently as well. But as far as the types are concerned, one of the first ones I wanna look at is an incident response team. And this is a fairly common uh, type of a job to have. It basically means you spend much of your time investigating and possibly mitigating some sort of a security incident or a security event. Uh, in some cases, teams are tiered. Um, you don't have to start at tier one. Once you finish the program, you can start higher than that, but that's going to depend on the effort that you put into the program and the level of knowledge and skill that you can demonstrate when you're interviewing. Another type of position that is quite common is working in a security operations center doing operations and administration. These positions, typically, these positions typically also involve some troubleshooting, uh, but they are typically more involved in automating routine tasks and to reduce human error and also reduce response times. If hacking's your thing, white hat of course, uh, penetration testing can be a pretty interesting career. This typically consists of a blue team, which is trying to prevent attacks on their infrastructure versus a red team, which is trying to compromise someone's infrastructure. Uh, positions are available where you could be working on either team. Uh, very often the blue team is employed by an organization in-house and a red team is very often outsourced. And the last uh, type of position I wanna take a look at is security analysis, which is also an option. If you're interested in working more on the research side of things, uh, this typically involves keeping up with current threats, uh, trying to find ways to mitigate them that would be um, forwarded out to the support teams and the operations teams in order to prevent uh, attacks from being successful. You can work for just about any type of company you want in this field. 
Uh, some companies, typically larger ones, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, will have their own in-house digital security teams. Many outsource all or part of their digital security to firms that specialize in that area. And the firms that specialize in providing um, digital security as outsourcers are growing greatly in this point in time. Okay, I chose a few fairly common questions about the IT network security program. So hopefully I can answer uh, some of your questions to start with. The first one I usually get asked is what is required coming into the program to be successful? So since this is a pro, since this program is a postgraduate program, you should have a degree or a diploma in a computer science or at least engineering discipline. Uh, college admissions team will work to ensure that your education credentials will support success. The college admissions team will work with you to ensure that your educational credentials will support success in the program. You also need some practical experience with networking and operating systems whether that be through education or work experience or a combination of the two. If you come into the program without any practical experience, if you come into the program without practical experience or practical skill, it's going to be extremely difficult for you to do well. We also consider work experience only for those who have been working extensively in the IT field. And the college looks at those applications on a case-by-case -case basis. Another common question, another common question is, is the program hard? Uh, there is a lot of work that has to be done to complete the program successfully. Having more practical experience is helpful, uh, as are the analytical skills that you gain from previous post-secondary study. Regardless of that, you will have to put in plenty of work to be successful. And as mentioned before, the more work that you put in, the better job that you're going to be able to land once you complete the program. Last question I'll look at that many people ask is, is there much hands-on work? And the answer to that is absolutely yes. IT network security is a very applied program. There are many things you have to know to work in IT security, what you can do is as important, if not more so. So the level of practical skill that our graduates gain helps them to be much more attractive to companies looking to hire. And that brings us to the end of the information that I have for you today. If you have any additional questions, please feel more than welcome to email me at the address that you see. And thanks for your interest in the IT network security program.